here's another project that I'd like to share with you. When I did my shop tour, this part of, of the, uh, the shelves were empty and I just, well, or they had quilts folded in them and I really wanted to store my fabric. I had it in a bin under the guest bedroom. So I had to walk into the other room when I wanted to do something and it just wasn't working for me. I want to show you what I've discovered. A lot of quilters know this, so I'm not the first one, but um, you can go online and buy comic book boards. And they're this really nice um, paper. It's coated, they're cut perfectly, and they're acid free. And you can wrap your fabric around them. They work like a little mini bolt. I really, I thought, oh, I'm not gonna have enough room if I go this way. But it was incredible. Look at all of the fabric that I have got stored on my fabric boards. And I've, of course, arranged it by color. Let's adjust a little bit. So everything from here over is batiks. And then low volumes to browns to yellows, oranges, red, pinks, purples, blues aquas and greens. It's pretty rewarding when you're doing or sewing scrappy to have your fabric stored that way. Let me show you how easy it is to wrap a piece of fabric. And oh, and by the way, I store half yards or more on my boards. My um, fat quarter baskets are some half yards, but mostly less than a half yard or a fat quarter. This is how I do it. I've got not quite a yard. Well, I take it back. I, I do have a yard of fabric and I've cut into it, used it so the selvage's already taken off because I save selvages. But I fold it over about four inches, kind of even it up. And I'm gonna use this as a guide, my board as a guide. And then I fold the folded side in half to about here. Now, I lay the board on it and there's quite a bit of space on both sides of the board. Don't know if you can see that. So I think what I'll do is open it up a little bit. And that's about the way I like it. And then I start from the end, fold it over and smooth it tight, and then just continue flipping it. Now, that's the way I fold my fabric on these boards. There's gonna be a way you would like to fold on. You don't need to fold them the way I do. I don't like the let me show you also how I end it. So I don't like the loose flaps. So I stick two pins in it to hold it back, just into the fabric to hold it down. And that way it's not gonna come unraveled on the board. And there I go, look at that. A yard of fabric folded on a little bolt, which I can put on my shelf. So I really have to recommend storing fabric this way. And it's easy to dust, keep clean. There are people that have glass cupboards or glass doors over theirs. So that of course would be the ultimate for me. I'm not there yet, but for now, I'm gonna put this Darling's fabric in kind of my pink and oranges. And there you have it. Such a fun and great way to store fabric. And um, I hope you learned something from this. I was glad to be able to show it to you. So here you have it. These are my fat quarter baskets. And I decided to do one of each color that I was going to need. However, I did add two extra in. I added a salmon and I added a lemongrass, which is between the lemongrass between these two colors and the salmon between these two colors. And the reason I added those is because 
I had two extra spaces on my shelf. So I thought, what colors do I want? Do you really imagine that I have this many salmon fat quarters? I don't. The salmon fat quarters are actually in my orange basket of fat quarters. And there's all colors of salmon throughout here. <clears throat> Let me show you what I have in the salmon. I love polka dots. What girl doesn't love polka dots? So I put all of my polka dot fat quarters and large pieces in the salmon basket, which I really, really like. Again, I think I showed you in the video that this is my low volumes. And then I have a second basket. It's a little crooked here. I, I needed gray for the middle, but I, I want mostly to put blacks and grays and browns and, you know, more neutral tones in. But uh, I, I don't have any order yet. It's just kind of there, blah. Some stuff that I need to figure out what to do with. And then in my lemongrass basket, this is just my catch-all basket. There's a whole bunch of little flower prints and white on white and some other prints that I kind of quite don't know what to do with, but I'll find something to do with them. But when I kind of have something, when I do have something left over, I know that that doesn't fit any place else. I do know that it goes in the lemongrass basket. So I was really excited to have this finish. I think they look fantastic. I love my color wheel all the way around and uh, it just makes me happy. My fabric is accessible and I can get to it. I'm going to link that video below so you can see how to make these fabric baskets because they're totally worth it. Thanks. They're totally worth it. When I did my quilting shop tour, I showed you my Scatus. It's a pegboard from Ikea and I put all of my rulers on it. So I've been using it and while I love it, it's so overloaded that I have to double up some of the rulers, lift some up. So I really need more storage space for my rulers. What did I do? I went to Ikea, look at that, and I got another one. And you know what, there's some, some rulers down there that are awkward to put up because everything is so stacked. But today I'm going to organize, well, first I'm gonna hang another pegboard or the scatus, and then I'm going to organize my rulers on it so I have the ruler storage that I need.
check them out. These little, I always drop the screws. These little screws with the head off. My rulers are going to be so happy. Another ta-da!